Hello, sir or ma'am. It is Brian again, and in today's video I would like to explore how this one image very well encapsulates the protocol that I discuss, or the behind-the-scenes unseen hand which governs a lot of the strangeness we see on Earth's surface and in society in general. This image is from the Codex Serafininius, made by this Italian dude in 1981. And it's got all kinds of abstract, kind of surrealist, very hybrid type images. So this horse one is from that Codex book. So just kind of a book of art, strange melds and splices of objects and animals. And at first I thought it was from the Voynich manuscript, which you're looking at here, but uh, it's more recent. But um, the Voynich manuscript in general does have the same type of thing going on, just like a bunch of hybrid gibberish patterns. So I think the Voynich manuscript is a plumbus as well. Okay, so here are the ways in which this image is similar to the protocol we're dealing with. So I'll just go around and read these. Recycled themes interspersed throughout. Intragarbling, or intergarbling, depending on the case. But we see the red-blue, we see the polka dot type pattern uh, recycled over here. So that's a common thing, just recycling one theme or motif in a different format elsewhere. Okay, another strategy of the protocol, continuous deform from sensible beauty to senseless muck. So we've got a fairly elegant thing going on over here, this beautiful creature, and then it slowly morphs or bastardizes into this goofy caboose thing, or very ugly deformed blob. Next up, saturated with deformities. So we see these weird corpuscules or <laughs> blemishes or whatever you want to call them and uh, knobby blobby deformities. So deformity is one motif. Gratuitous out of place details or mismatch. So we will see parts of a architectural structure or historical structure which don't seem to add up to a coherent explanation, or they don't agree with one another, or we just see a style clash. All right, featured derp, subpar crap on display as if elegant or sophisticated. So in this image, we have this nothing burger here paraded around as if it's worth parading around or something like that. I don't know, maybe there's some purpose with the horse or whatever, but it's just uh, featured derp. So at many sites we will see something strange and derpy on display as if it's something magical and wonderful. Okay, and then I have a few examples I'd like to show of each of these. So let's start back here, saturated with deformities. So for example, at one of these sites in Peru, we have the design of this structure is saturated with polygonal deformities, uh, these knobs and variations on the knobs, like even deforming the deformities. And this big wall at Saxe Waman is saturated with these contrived deformities to add to the richness and mystery of it. Here are some deliberate deformities left at Sigiriya in Sri Lanka and these grooves as well. And on a larger scale in Ireland, these almost fingerprint-like grooves on the ground, they are a goofy deformity which mars the landscape. Same thing in Jordan, goofy deformities, this time in the form of stacked rocks, just nonsensical, deformed gibberish. New Jersey, we have these deliberate deformities, especially this one right here, this very awkward knee or hiccup, and then some of this stuff as well, possibly. 
just deliberate deformed oddness. Next up, let's see a few examples of mismatch or out of place details. So straight away, this somewhere in the UK, this very strange wheel right in the middle of it. So that's telling you right there that this is not a legitimate piece of rock. It's contrived. Here on the ceiling of this room in Petra, we have this nonsensical circle carved out of the ceiling or into the ceiling. And in Pompeii, Italy, we have this standalone arch with this tire looking thing, like a donut sticking out of it. And then we have another round thing sticking out here, another thing here. Then on the back side, we have more out of place or mismatched debris sprinkled in. Here's another look, just a very out of place object in the brickwork. Here's another example in Sri Lanka of an object with features which don't match with one another. This is like all bevel and no bench. So it's almost like it's supposed to be a bench or something like that, but all it is is like beveled edges and instead of a back seat, we have yet another rounded edge here. It's just a very strange feature soup. Fit Coast Peru, we have these knob features and these grooves and stairs and random jagged cutouts which don't all add up to anything. It's just a strange salad of geometry. So this would be a good example of mismatch or a bunch of strange features just kind of slammed together. And one more in Saiwite, Peru. Just a bunch of features that almost match but don't quite match or don't quite add up to anything coherent. Next up we have the idea of featured derp or displayed, almost exalted sometimes, or revered crappy derpy objects. So for example, this one again is like this display of, you know, ta-da! It's like being presented as this historical beauty almost, or maybe I'm just projecting that onto it, but it's like a wonderful historical object in theory, but when you look at it, it's just nonsense. It's featured derp salad. Same thing here. It's just this nicely positioned goofy rock salad here with all these deformities. We can almost picture like Vanna White on the side kind of walking back and forth and waving her hands across it like, oh, look at this. Look at these. Look at these knobs. It's like a big display of derp. And then here we have some nicely arranged derp on display for you to check out when you're hiking around. We have this nice little diorama. <laughs> Not really, but a little prop here. Just a nice little nothing burger display. And these things are nothing burgers. They're not anything. They were never functional in my opinion. They're just in a strange in-between space or a hybrid feature soup. And then these of course are presented as legitimate historical objects and worthy of careful study and we have sphinx-like objects, this Egyptian one and the Sumerian one. These are on display in museums as if they're some sacred or impressive or perhaps precious or priceless piece of history when really they're just members of a kit of derp salad, uh, theme soup or motif soup, all mapped to many domains such as sculpture and canvas artwork and hieroglyphics. It's all derpy, strange hybrid objects which did not arise organically. They were contrived by this discombobulation protocol. And then we also have architectural pieces which are featured in other locations. So this one in New Jersey is a recycled or featured piece of goofy architecture from this other site, which itself was a part of the protocol, just a more or less 
fallaciously or deceptively implanted part of our history. So the design of this building was not by some architect, but rather generated by the protocol. And then what the protocol further does is it takes part of this building and features it in another site as if elegant. It's like a frame shift or a frame set where our current locations of interest are defined in terms of past locations of interest or phenomena of interest like this fountain and it's all a reference point hijack or a management of perception. It's all managed by the protocol somehow. Recycled themes interspersed throughout. So in this image we have the red and blue as a theme and it is mapped to these other parts of the horse. So there's like a library of themes or motifs that occur in different formats at all of these sites. So let's look at a few examples of that. So we have the theme of polygonal masonry. That's a recurring one. We have the theme of square holes and nonsensical holes in general. This one is in Peru and this one is in China up in the mountains. And then we have one more in Petra here, same theme. And so a variation on that theme would be indentations of a more messy look. And that is another theme. So just a tweaking out of the square theme and we get indentations like this. Another theme is grooves such as these in Petra and very similar grooves at Sigiriya in Sri Lanka. Another theme is divots, so nonsensical dents or indentations or protrusions, but we see this dolmen here and it's got this little indentation there, this little tick out of it or a hiccup, almost a little bite chunked out of it and this is, I think, the Great Pyramid in Egypt, and we have the same thing, or a similar geometrical motif, at least. Doorways to nowhere, just the sealed off fractal or nested doorways, which are purposeless, more or less. These occur all around. This is a big recurring theme. Nonsensical dead-end breadcrumbs is another thing that's occurring in all these historical sites and objects. So this looks like it might be a significant thing worth noting. So does this acorn, so does this bag, but the theme is these are dead-end breadcrumbs which don't lead anywhere. They just look like they might lead somewhere. Another in Egypt we have these nonsensical variations just useless idiosyncrasies and empty mysteries or dead-end breadcrumbs. Another thing is silly hats and also hand placement of these goofy statues and figures. So this is Easter Island. And then France, we have the similar hand placement, just a slight variation. And then a similar thing in Nigeria, just a slight variation on the hand placement, but similar looking nipples. Just tweaked out geometrical themes that are recycled and morphed slightly at each site. And then lastly we have continuous deform from sensible beauty to senseless muck. So this occurs in several ways. Number one, not just visually but on a long-term basis, temporally. The agenda of the protocol is to set up a false sense of history which funnels us into a process of spiritual and cognitive degradation. So it's trying to dumb us down over a long, continuous, well-managed period of time. And then visually we have actual continuous deformation from one style to another. So let's take a look at a few examples of that. This one in Saxe Waman, we see this style of block work and it kind of morphs 
almost continuously into this more vitrified look. And we might suspect that that's from damage of some kind. However, we do see kind of a feature average between natural bedrock and masonry or block work. So right here, this is almost a halfway point where one style is halfway between the two styles. This one I've showed before, we see this puffy block work and these blocks down here are almost halfway between this style and this style up here. So these are more jagged and less precise. And then down here, we have some quasi puffy stones or quasi megalithic like these ones over here, but they also share some properties of these rocks up here. A number of reasons for that, but it's almost like a continuous, like from here to here, it's like a continuous morph from one style to another. This we have a fairly abrupt transition from this protruding portion of this block and a style of flat faced block. So this is a very blatant abrupt one, slightly less continuous. Here we have a possible average on some of these column layers between round and square. So some of these layers look almost like they're indecisive about which shape to be like this one was it round or was it square? Like they, either they got really sloppy or indecisive, or the protocol is using some type of interpolation or averaging technology to tweak out forms and shapes. So this might be considered a average between a gear and a basin or sink. This right here might be a halfway point between masonry or block work and natural bedrock. We have a wall right here of stacked stones and this is kind of part of it or at least in the vicinity and this is Berkeley, California. And these rocks are looking halfway natural, halfway like an artificial wall. In Montana we have a very similar fairly blatant, almost like right on that 50% line between natural and artificial. So this is half wall, half natural bedrock or natural patterns of some kind. So it's that idea of a deform between two styles. Machu Picchu compared to Montana, very similar quasi artificial, quasi natural patterns. And if you were to average a dick butt with a pitchfork, Somewhere in the middle, you would get this guy right here. This is one of the Nazca lines in Peru. And then the temporal aspect again, this is the overall agenda of the protocol. Uh, Nicki Minaj aside, just the idea of a degradation over time into a couch potato or a slug of a useless, unthinking human being. So that's the long-term agenda in my opinion or best guess. And so perhaps these principles are the lever which powers the machinery of the protocol. So in this image we have this supplementary figure over here and this is an imaginary language by the way, just the artist's whimsies. No real meaning behind it apparently, but it's a good analogy nonetheless. So these strategies, which we've been discussing, they comprise the lever, which turns the machinery of the protocol. And so a couple comments on the protocol in general. This is from the movie Contact. And if you remember, there's a scene where the code is cracked by realizing that the code describes itself with itself. So within the code itself is the explanation of the code. So the idea of uh, self-reference or a self-contained hint. So this is uh, something from my house. It's gold leaf plated leaves. So it's leaved leaves. And that's the idea of embedding the explanation for the code within the code or within the presentation of the code. So a couple examples of that. The dead end staircases are a theme which tells you 
about the strategy of the protocol. So we are in some type of distraction generator, which creates shifting dead end staircases for you to traverse only to realize that there was no point in going down that road. So in other words, it's like a something which is constantly leading you into a false path or a useless, senseless path. Another goofy staircase down here. Another one which just changes direction. So that's the idea of these impossible Escher staircases just going haywire and leading you nowhere and ultimately being fairly useless. So the design of this site is telling you about the principles that it's using. Here's another example of the staircase to nowhere, like from nowhere to nowhere. So that could be a truth drop in my opinion, coded in the design or the motif of a goofy staircase. Yet another here in Israel, just a staircase that dead ends at a wall. This start and stop, nothing burger staircase pattern. Quasi decorative, but not really. And these again, representing the idea of one of the main strategies of the protocol, which is to generate a bunch of false paths for humans to follow or unwise choices for us to make, which appear at first that they might lead somewhere worthwhile, but ultimately end up being distractions or getting you more lost than you were before. So the protocol is attempting to ensnare us somehow in a carefully managed reality, probably to metabolize us for some purpose. But yeah, that principle is embedded in the idea of these silly staircases. Okay, so that's it for this video. Please enjoy my new outro segment that I spent way too long on and finally decided to debut in this video. So stay tuned for that right now.